Here we'll take a look how to work with our Flutter app and Google Map. Now definitely first you need to install Flutter Google Map and then in your UI you should call this Google Map Constructor and as you call it at the same time you have to set up a property which is called Camera Position. Now Camera Position would be working with two kind of properties mostly. One is called cam On Camera Idle and the other one is called On Camera Move. Now these two function plays, these two properties actually plays very important role on updating the UI or the map actually, I mean the map location that plays very important role. So whatever they uh, help you with eventually they return you a position object as you can see so from camera position actually we can get a position object now that position object we send to let length class or a constructor and that let length constructor we send to the server google map server google api map server and that Google API map server does something that is called geocoding. So whatever you send let lang that geocoding Google server returns a geocoding object and from that object actually we get a string and that string is the actual object that we want to show on our Flutter app. So let's go ahead and take a look at the app. So here we'll take a look how to work with this Google map and how to update position as you tap on your map or move the map like this and you'll see that uh, over here it gets updated automatically so how to do this thing now of course definitely you have to install your google map uh, if you're using flutter app now after doing that you have to take care of first few things uh, well now here is my google map this is the google map class where we call this constructor actually and it has different properties that we send to it so one of the most important property is this camera position now it takes the initial position now well it could be actually any position for this target property so now what is this initial position now for me in my app i have initialized it at the top now, it may look scary a lot of this but you can skip that so as you see over here i have this uh, variable which is called initial position and it's a type of let length object so where is our initial position well initial position itself i have initialized over here now inside a conditional block now the conditional block doesn't really matter it could be any kind of condition for you and based on that you go ahead and initialize now as you saw at the top i have this initial position as a let land object so over here i'm providing latitude and longitude and it returns me an object that object we save over here and the same goes over here as well now over here of course i'm doing some checking which means that i'm getting some data from server but this data once again is just pretty much like that but based on different condition i'm assigning values to it so the idea is before you want to use google map class you have to have values for your initial position and that value is lat lang doesn't matter which format so over here as you can see it also returns a lat lang object over here so once you are done with that so you have to what well, in your ui wherever you use this google map class it doesn't matter so first you want to take care of this initial camera position and inside this you will have this camera position and you will simply pass the initialized value for this target so when you launch your app first time and you see the google map the coordinate would be shown based on this on whatever you have initialized early so it would be just like that and there are some other default properties you can set them to true or false they really don't matter they're a bit fancy i think okay now uh, the other one which is very important over here this uh, property which is called camera on camera idle now this one actually um takes a callback function so this property takes a function but that function only gets called when our app stop when our map stops moving so the idea is if we if i keep moving right now i'm moving but this method wouldn't get called but as soon as i stop it this method would get called and as you can see here we are calling a function from our controller now we'll come back to this one before that we need to take a look on this one 
So I would say on camera move, this function, this property actually is more important than this one. Well, now over here, this callback function actually gets a position object. Now you will see that this position object is a camera position object if you hover over on this. So whatever the position Flutter gives you from Flutter uh, Google Map, that position you can save this in this camera position. Now we have to know what is this camera position. And so let's take a look. Let's uh, we'll go up and let's try to understand what is this camera position. So once again, you will see that at the top I have this camera position constructor and I created an object. Now, so camera position over here it takes target property which is based on lat length. So earlier we have seen that lat length, and uh, over here we are once again using lat length to assign a value for this target position. So camera position, this one, this class creates an object and that object we save in this variable and the object it takes is also a lat length object. So what happens is that, so this object camera position or the one we declared at the top, it has to be updated all the time as you move or drag your map on the UI section. So what I'm trying to say so as you see this one gets us camera position whatever position it gets it is actually happening based on the movement so as you move the position gets updated and we save it over here so this camera position this variable gets updated because of this argument over here so on camera move so it takes a uh, argument and this argument you can pass it to your local variables so our local variable is camera position so as I keep moving, so I get updated value, I save it over here. And once the moving is done, this property on camera idle gets called and this is where actually we update our actual position. So now this is a controller that I'm using, getx controller. So here, yes, I do have some initial condition as well as some conditional conditions. So those really don't matter. So uh, but one thing you have to do that so as we are passing that's a camera position position once again So here we are passing camera position now earlier. We saw that this is a camera position object Now over here we take the same as you can see camera position position and I do have a boolean This position object is very interesting because from here you can access target and then you can access latitude and longitude as you can see based on that actually you can get a position object okay now of course here i have a conditional check based on different condition wherever i am from different routing system i get a different position object and anyway so i save them in different variables so most importantly here one thing we do so what i'm trying to say that we are passing from UI, from UI, we are passing camera position. So camera position itself can have this target and target has this latitude and longitude. So based on this, once again, we can get let length object, but let length object is like a coded value, which uh, not really human readable. So what do we do? We, we do something that is called get address from geocode. So I think this is more like something they call it geocoding. So you have this camera position object and from that you tr get latitude and longitude and then you wrap it around let length. Now one second let length is directly coming from Flutter Google Maps. So yeah you pass to it and it gets you an object and then we call this method. Actually this method is defined at the top so as you can see so over here we have this let length. Remember earlier over here let length let length is this one inside this uh, get address from geocode so it is a let length object and whatever the object it is uh, we come at the top and then we call a network request so this actually goes down to Google server okay because this is an endpoint actually so this repo goes to an endpoint and eventually in the server side this is what it looks like okay so eventually I grab all this object the let length as you can see in this request object and now how to verify that you will see that over here I have this let length so from request I get let and length 
And at the same time, we pass the slat line value to this Google API. So as you can see from here, it says that maps Google APIs.com maps API geocode. So whatever you do and drag and drop, that gives you a latlang object. That latlang object you have to send to the server, Google server, with your key as well as uh, this latlang object. And then based on this latlang and key, Google server would send you a response. And then we check the response. If it is okay, yes, we just get the body property and the first one and we get the string part and we save it this variable which is called address now address is of course a string so what happens over here up to this point it returns us a string object okay all right now well after that so here this is a string but we are doing some fancy work with this uh, placemark class now placemark itself eventually returns this placemark placemark object now this placemark object has some property so whatever the string you get you passed to this placemark class and it will return a placemark object so in our ui so what happens over here once the camera stop moving so uh, we call this updated position over here we pass it and then we end up having this placemark object now this placemark object we have a getter at the top so as you can see placemark okay so this is a getter of placemark so that also means that in the ui we can access this placemark so this is our ui and you will see that over here location controller placemark name now placemark has many different properties we can access so we access them all right but anyway so this is the um, i was trying to print a log now over here uh we see that um, uh whatever we get from placemark we try to combine all of them and put it in this text controller so this text controller actually is uh, this one over here so as we click on this we pass the latlan object to the google server and it returns us an object and that object we put to placemark and from placemark we retrieve either the name locality postal code and country code and this is then we save it over here in this text controller so the text controller actually we see over here so in the text field so remember this is a text field now one thing i could do over here if we go to this google map now here we do see that on camera move as camera moves we pass this position to this camera position object and we have seen earlier that it calls the controller with this value and then update the position now if we if we uh, comment this out now and let's hot reload our app and after that if we drag and drop you'll see that it doesn't update because we are not passing any updated value to our controller over here it's the old value so nothing changes over here yeah but if we take this out and hot reload now if we move you will see that it changes over here give it a time yes it changed give it a time it changed and uh, just like this so as you're moving it changing over here so it's very important this method on camera move and on camera idle so anyway if you have more questions leave a comment below thank you so much